But now it's exactly seven o'clock, so I would like to welcome you all to Having a Laugh. Having a Laugh features Cheryl McClellan, Helena Ascoff, and Wendy Young, compared by Julie Newman, the artist, activist, and chair of Together 2012. I'm going to hand over to her in a moment. I just wanted to say thank you to our funders, Arts Council England and the National Lottery Community Fund. I'd also like to just flag up the fact that this is part of the Together 2021 Disability History Month Festival. It's our 10th festival, so this is the ninth year that we've been doing it. It's better than ever, even though it's online, or maybe because it's online. So without further ado, well, I'm going to do two, well, sorry, just checking something. So I'm delighted to say that we now have Wendy Young with us, who will be performing later in the show. So it's an evening of comic poetry, comedy and comic poetry, having a laugh, which is something we've all been doing as much as we can in the last 18 months and certainly need to continue to do. I was thinking about these wonderful poets earlier today and thinking about my COVID poetry, which is not comic at all. It's very angry and very sad. And when I got the opportunity to do some poetry sets back in LGBT plus history month, what I had was audience after audience on Zoom, all sitting there going. So I'm <laughs> delighted that I don't book poets like me, but instead poets like the wonderful poets that we're going to see this evening. So. She's been locked down with me for longer than we can remember. She's um, decided to go for a slightly different form of PPE today. So I give you Julie Newman. Thank you, Ju. Um, as you can see, there's access problems with this outfit. So I'm going to adjust it. That's better. <laughs> That's much, much better. Uh, I was dressed up briefly, and still am actually, because I've got my T-shirt on, um, as a plague doctor from the Dark Ages. Uh, plague doctors were around from oh, about 1340-something right up until the 17th century, um, and I just got fascinated with them during the first lockdown, uh, I was doing a lot of reading about um, plagues, like you do. <laughs> and uh, I came across this wonderful outfit. So I went to eBay and I bought myself bit by bit uh, parts of the outfit so that I could do something artistic with it ultimately. Um, but then the pandemic became a little bit serious, so it was a little bit more difficult. Plus, when I tried the outfit on, there were very obvious access problems. Um, you couldn't see my mouth, so anybody lip reading was absolutely not able to do that. The sound was muffled, and personally, I couldn't see it at all through the through the glass bits on the on the mask itself. So I've sort of given that up, although it's still tucked away in the back of my mind as as a as a piece of work that I might explore a little bit later on. Anyway, I'd like to welcome everybody to tonight. Um, I'm going to ask you not to speak to me from the side <laughs> because she puts me right off. What I was going to say is I think we'll we'll start now um, as we're coming up. Oh, no, we've still got a little bit of time. I got overexcited. <laughs> I got completely overexcited with the mask business um, and the plague doctor. Uh, so... And my contribution for tonight is a poem linked into, um, what should we say, responsible, responsible living um, on our planet, and especially given the attention that was paid to the, the COP26 conference, which ended last week, um, I, I was really quite intrigued because I'd come across a story in, in the media about Barbie and about Mattel recycling Barbies. 
Um, and I hadn't really thought about dead Barbies up until that point because, you know, you sort of think, oh, I don't know where they go. They always seem to have bits of arms missing or heads or something in the charity shops. Um, so I, I, I wrote a, a, a poem about it. It's called Plastic Waste. Where do Barbies go to die? Is there Barbie heaven in the sky? And do they gather in the dead of night, like a flock of angels ready for flight? Or without a word or other sign, do they quietly slip to another time, where the world was again happy and gay, with no thoughts of disaster to cloud the day? Is there a hillside somewhere in a jungle park, where skulls of Barbies hide in the dark? Have they marched in silence to their ultimate end, driven by instinct, when no repairs can mend their broken limbs, arms akimbo, legs lost in play? They know they must go, they cannot stay in a world of perfection, a world so bright, this is their destiny, their endless night. So has an invisible mountain of plastic waste gathered not far from here, Foliage laced with limbs like spikes of plants, the hairy flowers poke through with faces like fairies. Or is their last march to the churning sea? Do they fling themselves in with a heartfelt plea? Please keep me safe in my final bed. Please keep my body secure with my head. What will become of their twisted limbs as they float into the ocean for that final swim? Their bodies may gather in an island grotesque. Miles across, Barbies in states of undress. Lest this becomes real, let caution be your guide. Pause before dropping your dead Barbies inside that general waste bag. Instead, consider the sea and use plastic recycling as an end for Barbie. <laughs> uh, and I just thought that that appealed to me because I, I, we always hear about the plastic ocean, which is miles across, uh, and it's sorry, it's a plastic island in the ocean in the Pacific Ocean, which is miles across. I, I got quite intrigued at uh, Barbie facts. There's, if you go to Google, there are so many sites which tell you interesting and quite bizarre Barbie facts. Um, so, for example, I'm sure some of you know Share a Smile Becky, the, the wheelchair-using Barbie, uh, which Mattel introduced in 1997. And over 6,000 of these dolls were sold within the, fir the first few weeks. Um, and unfortunately, it was found out pretty quickly uh, that her wheelchair just did not fit through the doors of her accompanying dream house, nor did it fit the lift. Now, Mattel took this seriously and promised to adapt the house to accommodate Becky. And 20 years later, that still hadn't happened. Uh, her feet stuck out too far in the footplates. There were discussions with Mattel about making her wheelchair smaller, but that became too difficult. Um, they tried different careers for Becky to try and make her more socially acceptable outside of the house. So they made her a school photographer, a sign language, I love you, Becky, and a Paralympic Becky, um, you know, given that they wanted to encourage the pursuit of careers and hobbies. However, they finally gave up on her. She was causing them so many problems that she quietly disappeared from the shelves. And in her place, uh, since actually since 2019, Mattel have introduced an inclusive Barbie range, including a wheelchair user, which presumably must have a smaller wheelchair, um, a Barbie with a prosthetic leg, a Barbie with a skin condition, and a Barbie with alopecia, and that is without hair. So they're really looking at, at actually giving children something that they can play with, that they can identify with. Um, in, this, in this year, in May, Mattel launched a recycling scheme um, for Barbies, Matchbox cars, and mega building blocks. Um, but they intend to recycle all the toys that they make and manufacture them with 100% bio-based plastic products by 2030. So it seems particularly fitting. I think they've probably listened to my poem and taken it quite seriously. 
Now, at this point, I'm going to introduce our first guest, Cheryl McLennan, um, who is coming in from London as well, although she doesn't originate here. So over to you, Cheryl. Oh, well, hello there. Hi, there you are. Okay. Well, we've been living in very strange and very unexpected times. And something very strange happened this evening. I just went outside to put some rubbish out. And there was a guy, he was just walking past. I'm a very, very tall woman. This guy was just walking past and he said, God, he said, you are really tall, really tall. He said, you are so tall. And I said, well, what is the problem? What's the point you're actually trying to make? And he said to me, don't be so aggressive. He said, not only are you tall, he said, you're ugly. He said, in fact, you could be a clown. So do you know what I did? I put on my size 17 and a half boots. I stuck a big red nose on my face. And I whacked him over the head with my plastic trumpet. So he wasn't expecting that. I see, people are just so rude. Anyway, the thing is, with this lockdown and living alone, you don't get used to the bell ringing. It makes you a bit nervous. Anyway, the person at the door had no idea, you know, that I was in the kitchen, you know, chopping up my vegetables with a six-inch cleaver and the doorbell. And so I went to the door and there was a guy standing there. He said, he looked at me up and down and he said, I've just come to read your meter. And I said, well, come on in. I've got my mask on. He had his on. I said, come on, social distancing. And he said, no, it's all right. I'm coming back. And when I came in to the hallway and I looked in the mirror and I saw my reflection, and my hair was standing on end. I had a great full dead T-shirt on, my pyjamas, and in my hand I had a six-inch chopping cleaver. So that's probably when I ran up down the road. Anyway, I found myself in some quite strange places, just trying to get a bit of space and, you know, living alone and everything. So I've spent quite a lot of time in cemeteries. So I went up to Highgate Cemetery. It was absolutely freezing, you know, just like two degrees. So I'm sat on a bench, you know, with my big hats on, loads of layers, you know, a thermal flask, flask, you know, having a bit of two boiled eggs for lunch. And there's no one there, of course, apart from Karl Marx. You know, I had a bit of a chat with him. You know, I, uh, I showed him the wind-up radio. Look, I said, look at this, Carl. <laughs> Things have moved on, and it's got a torch as well. Anyway, there was a guy walking past, you know, walking his dog quite hurriedly. And I thought he didn't seem to be too impressed. Another thing that I didn't expect to happen is that I had an accident in my flat. I fell over and I broke my knee. I managed to get myself into the bed, but I couldn't get it off the bed to go to the loo. I needed to go to the loo, so I phoned my Anyway, she is a very practical person. She did a carpentry course, did woodwork, lots of woodwork. She made me a pair of castanets, actually. Very crazy. Anyway, she arrived with a massive industrial sized saucepan, you know, one of those big pans, you know, that's got a, a big handle on. So when the ambulance crew arrived, I was sat half naked on the saucepan. I mean, it's not that, you know, not that I'm ungrateful, but it's like trying to expect, explain to that crew, you know, what was going on. I was going, well, you know this, and I thought, oh, never mind. Anyway, then the wheelchair, to get me into the ambulance, they couldn't get it through the door because it was very narrow. So my friend said, well, we can take you out through the window. So I said, I'm not going out through the bloody window. Two minutes later, going out through the window on a stretcher. Anyway, there's a guy there, you know, with his phone, you know, Taking a, taking a film rather than so. I'm probably on that TikTok, I've probably gone viral, I don't know. Anyway, people are kind of talking about, you know, I don't know, like you know, Christmas, what you're doing for the new year and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, my friend said, oh, you know, we can maybe go and have a spa and, you know, have a jacuzzi, you know, with friends. And I thought, well, you know, I can't afford that. But I was thinking about that big pan and I thought, well, I've got a hand risk. You know, so maybe get in that pan and have a bit of a do in there. You know. But you know, some New Year I've spent with the Buddhists, you know, because it's quite a nice way to bring in the New Year. You know, quite a, you know, they're chilled out, you know, it's a bit of chanting and a bit of meditation. But you know what? That meditation sometimes can be quite difficult, very difficult, because 
whenever I try and do it, I'm okay for a bit, I start to go, no, 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 no. And then for some reason, I've got this idea in my head of how to make a cheese pie. Nam yo ho renge no. Well, shall I get manchego? Should I? Nam yo ho renge no. Well, better not make that pastry too tough. Nam yo ho renge no. I've never made I've never made pastry in my life. I don't know cheese pie, so I don't know where that came from. Anyway, I've got a poem for you now. Just to talk about the food and stuff. And this is the poem because I'm not cooking for anybody. Any at all, you know, because it's just become very, very complicated. Years ago, it used to be very easy to have a smoke cat, you know, have a bag of rice and everybody else. Now, it's just not the case. So, this poem is called Fruities. So, it's such a pain cooking for anyone, anyone. I don't do it because it has become far too complicated. Because there are always at least two vegetarians who eat fish. But not with a head on. A vegan who wears leather shoes and a lapsed microbiotic mania who eats everything in somewhat guilty fashion. And then they demand to know, you know, whether the food has been baked, roasted, boiled, or toasted. And then a dreaded voice always asks, Do you have any fruit or herbal teas? And I say, Yes, I do. I have blackberry, cranberry, orange, echinacea, bilberry. Blueberry, peppermint, cardamom, cardamom, elderflower, and hibiscus. And a satisfied smile spreads across their face. Oh, but do you have any geo Because I'm just back from Japan, and that tea is fantastic, it's light and aromatic. No, I reply, but what I do have is a garden full of Japanese food. So go and have a supplement. Okay. So, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, it was great to be invited by uh, 2012 Together, you know, to take part in this Disability History Month Festival. Great things coming up. And, uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure to be here. Anyway, I may be coming to, you know, a cemetery near you soon. So if you see me, come on over and say hi. Okay, thank you. Take care now. Bye. Hey, Cheryl! <laughs> Oh, Cheryl, thank you so much. Um, I love the idea of your cheese pie, uh, <laughs> particularly sort of in the middle of Buddhist meditation. Um, it, I can really get that, actually. Uh, so thank you for sharing. Um, we've got a few minutes until our next person comes in. I was thinking about <clears throat> about sort of the exercises that I do to try and loosen up my voice before um before I come on air. Um and one of them is to use a popular tune which usually gets into my head and I cannot shake it off. So Ju usually uses da 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 and she she sort of like she she quite enjoys that one. I don't use that one so much because I don't know what the next lines are. <laughs> So I tend to go for the easy, shorter versions. And at the moment, with all the reality shows on, there's quite a lot of quite catchy little tunes that they're playing. So the tune that I'm using at the moment is... Now, I'm sure everybody who, who has BBC and watches these sorts of programmes recognizes that that's Strictly Come Dancing. Um, and Strictly, I think, is doing very well this year for the first time, actually, ever. Um, there's so many reality shows now, and it used to be that everybody was queuing up to apply for X Factor or Big Brother, and now we're spoilt for choice. However, I've been so impressed again with Strictly at John Waite and Johannes. Oh, they're so beautiful. They dance so well. And Rose Ailing Ellis and Giovanni definitely deserve a mention. They've done something completely amazing by bringing a deaf dancer into millions of viewers' living rooms. Um, 
when when they weren't expecting it. <laughs> I don't think at all. So I think that's that's rather wonderful. And using BSL as part of the commentary and how brilliant is that? It's really inspirational. Now, I was looking on Twitter this afternoon and somebody tweeted that they'd contacted the BBC asking about applying for Strictly Come Dancing. And the BBC said, the social media profile needs to be about a million followers. So I reckon if tonight's show is really popular and I can get the viewers to follow my social media outlets, then by next year I can write and apply to be their oldest contestant using a wheelchair and dancing in a same-sex couple. There's so many firsts, I can't see them turning me down at all. Um, I've actually already chosen my professional partner. I haven't told you yet because <laughs> I think she might be a bit jealous. Anyway, so that brings us up, I think, probably to Helena Askuth. I think I've pronounced her, her name properly, Askuth. Um, do you want to do an introduction, Ju, for us? Well, thank you for that, Julie. Da, 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 da. I think that's what the dogs have been watching just before the show. So, yes, I'm delighted. Well, and again, actually, first I should say thank you to Cheryl. And we realised that apart from Julie, all of our performers originate from the Northwest. And Helena is still there. She's an up and coming artist and poet. She's got a 15 minute or thereabouts set for us called Space Invaders. And um, we're really, really keen to see her. But um, I'm just going to go as we just so that I don't have to expect Helena to come on a couple of minutes early. I'm just going to read you some of the chat. So Wendy Young is saying, strictly Ju and Julie, quite right too. We've already got our own wheelchair dance company. Why would we need the BBC? And um, yes, Emily is saying, ha ha, I'd love to see you on Strictly, Julie. Mar Everybody was loved Cheryl's set. Margaret said she wants to have the recipe for your cheese pie. And um, and I think Emily is saying that she, she's going to be watching out for you on TikTok as you come out through that window on a stretcher, which I have to say is an image that is practically irresistible. Yes, and lots more of that. And uh, oh, and before that, lots of people saying lovely poem, Julie. Thank you. So thank you for your plastic waste. I understand that you actually collect Barbies and down at your studio, you have <coughs> rather a lot of old Barbies that you have rescued from recycling waste. This is true. I um, got very excited at the uh, 60th anniversary of Barbie um, a few years ago. Uh, in 2019 um, and I thought well, I wanted to do something as a tribute to 60 years of Barbie so I'd found a lovely recording of um, Ethel Smythe's March of the Women which is very stirring and and you know really good sort of nice marchy song it's a sort of feminist suffragette song isn't it it's very much a suffragette song at one point she she conducted the other suffragettes who were in Holloway Prison through the bars of her cell with her toothbrush and they all sang it in chorus, which must have been amazing. I would have loved to have seen that. Anyway, I thought, right, okay, what I'm going to do with the Barbies um, while I'm playing this music, they have to have something, you know, it's going to be a short film, a short art film. So my studio is right on the bank of the Thames. <laughs> and of course the tide goes out and the tide comes back and I look down at the at the London mud, the Thames mud, and I thought the thing to do really is to cover all the Barbies in mud and have the water come in and the water go out. But there's, there's an obvious flaw in this plan because you have to attach the Barbies to something, otherwise they get swept out to that great Barbie ocean in the sea. But I understand before that you'd originally got them as if they were like a terracotta army and you were going to blow them up actually yes yes I, i'd taken them to wales um and my friend the artist tony malone and i had found a nice little sort of little area in uh, in in wales just outside of dinas in uh, pembrokeshire 
and we we covered them in in uh, well set covered a couple in in mud and they looked rather splendid and I was going to line them up like the terracotta army and uh, Tony has a friend who is very excited about mun munitions so we were going I think he's done some film work I hope um, so I don't think that's a recommendation no probably not at the moment but uh, no I was going to blow the whole lot up as as it came to the grand finale of the March of the Women so keep watching for Julie's Barbies on TikTok I'm really pleased that she's not been able to bring them into the house because yeah I don't really want them being blown up here. But now I think it's time that we introduce Helena Askoff with Space Invaders. If you'd like to switch your camera and microphone on and we'll switch ours off. I'm going to be reading off my iPod. <laughs> I mean, my iPad, my bad. <laughs> Do you know where you're, you, you get your technology from? Yeah? Us. Us? Roswell Landings. Sound familiar? Anyway, I'm trying to fit in with all you humans, so hold on one sec. Actually, I'm a partially sighted extraterrestrial, so I spend a lot of my time, uh, just kind of in busy places, in small spaces. I have no spatial awareness. <laughs> no spatial awareness, no, no spatial awareness. It's ironic, isn't it? I mean, ironic is where I live. Ironic is my spaceship. Ironic is my home. I kind of prefer to be there and alone rather than other aliens and humans staring at me. So anyway, now, this is a very important topic. I've discovered public transport, human public transport. It's slow, it's smelly, and it never comes on time. But however, I did meet a woman called Brenda last week and she gave me a mint. <laughs> it was very nice, Brenda not the mint. Um, so this is a poem called Public Transport. I landed on this planet and panicked. The bus was always late and this human in a wheelchair had to wait for this human with another little human that was snotty and screaming and smelly. She had to wait for them to leave so she could get on and I thought Oh, come on. What with all this human technology? iPhones, drones, clones, xylophones. Surely we can make public transport more inclusive, humans. Mind the gap. I don't respect that. Mm -mm. I really don't. I think it's a joke. So, a little warning from me to you. We will invade soon. Have fun with that. You might be wondering, why have I bothered coming down to earth when I'm complaining a lot? Well, I wrote a list and I hope you enjoy it. The list is called, Why I Came to Earth. Kangaroos, the Queen, and Summers. Chocolate teapots, the ocean. Boris Johnson, licorice all sorts, cigarettes, ventriloquist dummies, Dummy worms, Ford Fiestas, sushi, and Lady Gaga. Oh, I love Lady Gaga. We are crazy about her back home, but I'm not sure if she's one of us, you know? I guess we'll never know. So, this is a poem called Holiday to Earth. When I put my holiday to planet Earth, I didn't realise there was a pandemic. Back at home, a pandemic consisted of man-eating deplathons that escaped the zoo. But this pandemic was more like a flu, but worse. Staring at a screen all day was a curse for people like me who can't even see a 
TV. Never mind Zoom. Zoom should be called Doom. It's more fitting. Doom. 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 Should go boom, in my opinion. That's all. But actually, all this live streaming gave those who were afraid to leave their ships possibilities. The world that was otherwise shut was open. But anyway, that mute button was so odd. I mean, I have a mute button. You can try and find it if you like. Whilst I got to Earth, it was really annoying. I had to isolate for 14 days and it was incredibly boring. I spent my whole time watching your Netflix and my essay it is absolutely rubbish. I didn't understand what any of them were saying. And then I watched that Amazon and I thought it'd be all rainforests and, you know, rain noise. And actually it really wasn't. So that was quite disappointing. And then I tried to watch the BBC, but I didn't have a TV subscription, so I couldn't do that. Anyway, whilst I was angry and isolating, I thought, well, I'm going to write the humans a letter. So here you go, humans, a letter from me to you. Dear humans, I don't want your Star Wars. I don't like your Star Trek. I want respect. I don't need your relationship. I don't need no peace treaty. I need space. <laughs> I need space to go at my own pace. I need you to accept me for me. <laughs> in ten eyes in all. I got myself a human man. That wasn't part of the plan. I abducted him in the middle of the night and uh, eh, he's all right. I am an alien girl boss. That's really cringy, isn't it? So get off my ship and leave me alone. XO, XO. So there you go, humans. You know, you're not all so bad. Some of you are, but we won't get into that. This poem is called Space Invader. Now, Back on my planet and on this planet, I've always felt like I don't fit in. I mean, I'm beautiful, am I not? But uh, people just don't understand me. I don't think anyone ever understands me. And sometimes that can be quite lonely. Um, and I am a little lonely at times. And I do feel like a space invader. And also, it's, I went to like B&M last week. And there was a packet of space invaders. I mean, how cruel are you, humans? They didn't taste very nice either. Don't tell anyone back home. Okay. This poem is called Space Invader. She is a space invader, waiting to be caught, standing forever in the wrong place, waiting for game over. She's been told that she's too much, too loud, too everything. She is a space invader. She gets so close, but not close enough to be shot. She is a space invader. And she is alone in her own game, where she can never win. For what she is a space invader, forever stuck, looking into space, waiting to escape. For she is a space invader. I often feel different back on my planet. I kind of feel invisible and seen. Do you get what I mean? I'm not sure people really understand the real me or how to talk to me, but it's okay. I don't care really, actually, I really do care. I, I do care. I want you to like be humans, I really do. <laughs> but anyway. You smell, so. Smell you later, humans. Peace out. Thank you, the lovely, the lovely <laughs> Eleanor. Uh, that, that was grand. I have a thing about space myself, so that, that was... Uh, 
particularly welcome to me. Um, I often, those of you who, who watch the show, the Together show regularly know that I'm always banging on about going to Mars or going to the moon to tidy up or something like that. So, you know, I never saw you. I, oddly enough, I never saw you when I was out and about in space. Um, but it's nice to see you now, and I'm glad you, you're with us. I'm just thinking about, just to fill in a little bit of time, uh, about the Barbie sites, S-I-T-E-S, although you could also look at S-I-G-H-T-S, so Barbie sites in many forms. Um, and I found that uh, there's a site called E.T. Online, um, and it's got the 14 most controversial Barbies ever which, of course, I went to. I found it most attractive to look at. I was just there, you know, as soon as I could. Um, and it's talking about the Barbies that were created and had to be either taken back or disguised as something else. Um, in the sort of early days of Barbies, uh, they had a babysitting Barbie, and that was kind of cool. You know, it's something that teenage kids did. Um, and something that that uh, that could get a little bit of money. It showed a bit of social responsibility, and gave a little bit of income. Um, but unfortunately, the, the babysitting Barbie was reading a book that was called "How to Lose Weight," that advises don't eat. So you can imagine that one was pulled. Uh, similarly, they had a slumber party Barbie. Now, in the States, slumber parties are actually quite a big deal. Um, you know, sort of it's a chance to, it's a sleepover, effectively, isn't it? Um, so in 1965, a little bit later than the babysitting Barbie, you'd have thought they'd have learnt. She's still reading How to Lose Weight, but when she goes to sleepover as part of her kit, is a pink scale that's permanently set at 110 pounds. Um, and it's been calculated that that's underweight by 35 pounds for the equivalent person that she'd be five foot nine. Um, so that hasn't gone down very well. That's been withdrawn. Pregnant Midge. <laughs> Pregnant Midge is one of my favorites. Um, <clears throat> now, she she's one of the friends. She's not the best friend of Barbie, but she's a friend of Barbie's, <clears throat> and she's pregnant, obviously. But one of the wonderful things is that her stomach comes off, and you see a fetus upside down in her belly. Um, again, there was a little bit of controversy about that because Midge was too young to be pregnant, and the doll might encourage teen pregnancy. So that was withdrawn very quickly, actually, because I tried to get hold of one, uh, and that was impossible. Uh, growing Up Skipper was was one of those funny ones. It was a bit of an action toy. Um, she was advertised as two dolls in one for twice as much fun. But when you rotated her arm to make her grow from a young girl to a teenager, most of the growing took place in the chest area. She ended up an inch taller and developed small boobs. That didn't go down well either. Um, there was also the Oreo Barbie, which I won't go into because it's just too embarrassing to talk about. Now, this Teen Talk Barbie. Um, now, there was a there was a, a real fad for talking toys a few years ago, um, and Barbie's main phrases included things like "Will we ever have enough clothes?" and "I love shopping," um, and the American Association of University Women took personal offence when she said, oh, math class is too too tough, too tough. So they took it out. They took that one out. Share a smile, Becky, we've looked at. But there was another good one, which was a Barbie forever, and she had Tanner the dog. Now, she was professionally dog walking. That was, that was part of her career choice. Um, and Tanner the dog could eat his food and then poop it out. Um, and then Barbie had a pooper scooper, um, and then she she picked it up. But unfortunately, the loose magnets in the scooper and the poops themselves became a choking hazard. <laughs> it forced Barbie forever to be withdrawn. Um, 
I think, how are we doing for time? We've still, we've still got another few Barbie interesting facts to do. There's a totally tattoo Barbie. Now, hmm, let's have a think about this one. Um, Barbie has a few regrets. Um, but whatever her tattoos said, because they were in Chinese and nobody knew what they what they actually said. They didn't really say inspiration, did they? Um, there was the whole idea of teenagers and youngsters wanting to get real tattoos because everybody knows that Barbie is a trendsetter. So that one was withdrawn. Um, and then there was, finally, there, there was the Coupe de Gras, which was Barbie Video Girl. Now, it wasn't a very good name, um, but she's an actress in a bikini and she dances around in the background of rap videos, etc., etc. But inside her chest was a real video camera. And the FBI got very, very worried about this <laughs> and was concerned that it wasn't secure on the internet, that somebody might break into it. So that one was withdrawn as well. Um, there was also there was the Mexican Barbie, which, in keeping with a lot of the other Barbies, which were culturally insensitive, needed to be <laughs> needed to be withdrawn because they they portrayed stereotypes and caricatures. Um, she got on the cover of Sports Illustrated uh, with a swimsuit. There you go. That's what we all want, isn't it? To be on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Actually, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> sort of in my electric wheelchair, I wouldn't mind that at all. I don't mind putting a swimsuit on and posing for the masses. Uh, but there was a Girl Scout Barbie as well. There was a brief, brief romance between the Girl Scouts of America and Mattel. Um, and they created a Girl Scout Barbie. Um, which sold out quite well, but Girl Scouts of America got into awful, awful trouble with it because of the wrong image of girls that was being portrayed in the Barbie, Barbie things, and and then finally, absolutely finally, is computer engineer Barbie. Now Barbie's clearly gone to school. She's obviously got through her maths problems. And she decided to become a computer engineer. Uh, and there was an accompanying book which said, Barbie, I can be a computer engineer. Um, but unfortunately, she mostly infects computers with viruses and can't fix anything without the help of her male co-workers. Um, and then the internet started to mess with recaptioning her pages and turned her into a super feminist hacker. So, Mattel said no, enough is enough. Oh, thank you for that, Judy. I wish I could um, reach far enough the across the studio to get my share, share a smile, Becky, because actually there is a way to get Becky into Barbie's house. But she becomes amputee Barbie. <laughs> Don't know why they didn't think of that one. But... Um, Finally tonight, we're delighted to welcome the very wonderful Wendy Young. Wendy has performed at a number of our festivals, both in Newham itself, Newham proper, as we would say, and in the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. She's also run poetry workshops for us. She's contributed to our pop-up poetry club anthology. And of course, she's enormously popular both around the London circuit and further afield. And like I say, is also the the final guest from originally, at least, the Northwest. So if you'd like to switch your camera and microphone on, Wendy, I'll switch mine off. Hello. 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 Oh, just a minute. Just a minute. I'm seeing if Anita's coming out. You're coming out to eat, Anita. Are you coming out to eat, what? At gonna dance to me, Anita. At gonna dance to me, a what? At a go gonna have a drink to me, Anita. At gonna have a drink to me, a what? 
Are you going to have some drugs to eat, Tanita? Are you going to have some drugs to eat or what? Will you have an hangover tomorrow, Anita? Will you have an hangover tomorrow or what? Will you be coughing and roting, vomiting and choking? Air Anita dancing, drinking, smoking and toting? Or will you stay in Tanita, Anita, or what? Are you going to pull that peat, Tanita, Anita? Are you going to pull that peat, Tanita, what? Or will it be that pole, Tanita, Anita? Will it be that pole or peat, Tanita, what? I wish you'd make your mind up about Tanita, Anita, because I've got a gig on tonight, Anita. I'm unpopular than you think, Anita. So if you go off with Paul to Nita Nita, I'll fly off with Pete to Nita Nita. Only let me know before to Nita Nita, because I want to know whether to dress up hot or what. Sorry about that. Just organising my life. Hello, it's so nice to be here. Um, yes, I am indeed a Northern Shire person. Um, I'm actually uh, Yorkshire rather than Lancashire. And uh, you may know, I, I haven't got a flat cap on because I'm more flat cap mushroom than flat cap and whip it. And I'm more nut roast than nutty slap. But, you know, I remember my roots. And... Because I have these roots and I live in the South, I was moved to write a poem recently about my accent because it has been a bit of a setback for me. Um, it doesn't matter where I am, what I do. Oh, you're from there. And then they'll mock your accent. And it final, the final straw was with a colleague who has a very cut glass accent who mocked me. And I got so angry, I wrote a poem. My accent, a dialect of old people, Bible tongue, rock, soil, grass, toil, coil, hammers, picks, spit, shiny buoys, thridings of ancient kings, black breed, kestrel wings, yours, Manufactured middle, scything my class like grass, acid on brass, fake diamond slice in China, serrated thong on a hairy ass. Stretch my old Norse whop and take home thrift young a town, Anglo Saxon brogue. But then up north, I wasn't allowed. Don't you want to talk properly, lose that accent? What accent? It's me. It's my property. No, I want to be me. Deep for a lass, my voice got laughs. Did I want to talk posh? I felt ashamed. Tried let, letting them elocutionise me. But I said, I have to be me. It's my burr, my property. Still fighting moronics, years on, who take the pee. Officer in shiny buttons. Where's that stupid accent from? Willy Lulai, your blue bottle get. Thank you. And for my next poem, I want to read a bit. This is my lockdown poem. I have to say... Lockdown was a blessing for me because I work for the NHS in my day job. I got to work from home and I got to actually attend gigs all night instead of having to get home and then get to work the next day and worry about it. And I got some more poems published. And this one is one of three that are in Magical Women's uh, magazine. And I'll just do an excerpt because it is a long one. But uh, it was kind of inspired by our lovely friend Richard Downs, who wanted to do a take on Desolation Row by Bob Dylan. Not that I've ever heard of it. And I thought, hmm. And I was thinking, isolation. So this is just a snippet from Isolation Row. I'm all fed up. Uh -huh -huh. I feel mighty real. I feel all fed up. Uh -huh -huh. 
I'm the real slim lady, shimmy, 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 shaky, and lately fading in the shady flat. Faddy, daddy, fuddy, duddy housework. God, wads of wipes. Easy wash for floors and ones for the tops. What's it all for? No mop, except on my head. Why bother on isolation row? What's that about a furlough? Oh, no, unprecedented. I feel like it's madness. They call it madness coming on. Furlough. Oh, got you. Not furlongs cut as in a bow from a branch, but off from work. We are back at the ranch. The new furl you curfew mother flouter. Broken like a bow down dominator meter. No fewer than two. Brace yourself, race to chase, face to face gatherers, a few flouts, some doubt. Will it do any good? We're in mess, it's the new hook. Sowing deeds, pleasing needs, smoking weed, does it help? Brother, can you spare a spliff? This one is called Obit. Um, I always flirted with the idea of an obituary. Um, and I often walk in the cemetery opposite. It's quite soothing. Kensal Green Cemetery. And it's full of history. Um, but, you know, being a bit morose and, hey, my moniker is misery with oomph. Um, this is called obituary. Your obituary will be, what a bitch you were to me, me against the rest. Said I was the best, possessed, enslaved, your power prevented me sleeping comfortably. Then you'd begin. No rest until you left. Dedication was all light on, light off, noting passionate assonance, penning sorrowful dirges, chiming rhymes like ding-dong bells, swinging in cerebral sing-song hell. You would not let me be, burden. I had a herd on my shoulders, bent body buckled under your weight. I died, I flied, I roared from the depths, a scream too far, caused a war in my muddled head. Yes, you saved me, yes, you made me. Payment was, you took me to dark places. Backs of pubs, clubs, hubs of anxiety. Messed, but also blessed. Gave me hope, gave me scope. I belonged, I was someone. The only one on another planet with you. Took me to the limit. Time after time, the price, lonely, bitter, no voice. Desiring perpetuity, but guilty of missed opportunities. Ingrate me, but remember, destiny caught up. Security won, chains of the past sought me out. Drained, shamed, no room for sentiment. Finally, it's you or me before you are the death of me. Poetry, I lay you to rest till the next one comes in my head. Because sometimes it can be a burden, you know, the poet, the burden of poetry. Oh, I'm sure all us poets know that everything's a bloody poem. Anyway. Um, I'll just do a couple more. This is a, a funny little one. Um, I'm sure we've all been uh, hinged to us, uh, locked to our sofas at times and just cannot get up to do anything. And um, I sort of was thinking about the Beatles and I thought this po thought of this poem, I am the walnut. Weighted down with the past, beached on the sofa, I look at my room, wedged in depression, ledged on edge of suppression, my own, fledged, I thought, but naught can make me shift to lift my arm to sift the dust. Huffing on a 
cow to do his duty, walrus rocks and lasers, but my fat ass raises cheek by cheek, moving it to prove I can do. When my mind clears, move stuff around. Slumped ideas will be penned to move your mind. I am the walnut. I am the walnut. Cracked open, my choo 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 choo. You do do do. I told you I was mad. <laughs> and this last one is called Little Grape. I cut my teeth on poetry. My gums bled, coursed through my veins, whacked my brain, words flooded my mind, filled my head, circulated confidence, stained and sped my tongue that rushed like reeds on the wild river, stretched my uvula, jiggled my jugular, pumped my neck exploded in my chest, fired my heart and freed my breath, healed my horse kick solar plexus, spun around my belly in visceral shreds, nourished my eggs, ovulated and bred, oiled my creaking pelvis, my sacrum swiveled like Elvis. Rushed through my legs, running with the wolves, found my pack, dealt and begged for more. My mental health, my body said, this is what you've been waiting for. Thank you for listening. Hey. And thank you so much, Wendy. Um, would the other performers like to switch their cameras on as well? We've had lots and lots and lots of messages in the chat. Um, I particularly liked Margaret's last one, which is, I am a walnut. There's lots of applause. Emily Welsh is saying, absolutely fantastic. Joanne Cox is saying, love to everybody. Glory's clapping. Cheryl says, absolutely brilliant. That was to Wendy. So, yeah, and lots and lots of feedback to everybody. I will post the, um, I'll copy and paste the chat and send it over to the artists later. I'd like to thank all of you so much. We really need to have a laugh. I think we're going to be doing much more of this kind of thing on Zoom. It's such a great way of getting together without having to worry. Forget about covid there's the transport problems, there's the safety issues, there's the drafty damp halls, there's the cost of the tickets, there's so many things that we can do for ourselves on Zoom. But the next thing that we have coming up, poetry and spoken word wise, is on Thursday the 2nd of December when the Pop-Up Poetry Cafe returns to the Together 2021 Disability History Month Festival. It's an open and mic evening. As always, we have British Sign Language language interpretation and live captions. We also have this Monday afternoon from 2.30 to 4, we have a sign poetry workshop with D.L. Williams from Bristol. That's for anybody who uses British Sign Language, Simple Sign, uses a version of those sign languages, or indeed can sign and wants to learn more about signing poetry. So as with everything we do, that's free. So please do check out the festival programme. It's on our website, www.together2012.org.uk. You can either book for Eventbrite, and that has the advantage that it sends you all sorts of automatic reminders without us having to remember to do that, which is always a little bit dodgy. And or you can just go to the program page on the night, just as this has been streaming, you will see it streaming live. But of course, we'd love you all to join in on Zoom because then you can come and perform a poem for yourself. That and I would also, of course, like to flag up that Survivors Poetry is currently meeting pretty much on the last Thursday of every month. So if you want to come along to that, get in touch with Survivors. It tends to be a much longer evening, so if you're not available early evening, 
or you just want to take part in a longer activity. They also have some wonderful musicians. So I'd really like to recommend Survivor's Poetry as well. And particularly because, of course, again, the other advantage is it's online. All of us can get there. Don't even talk to me about Blue Badge Parking and accessing the Poetry Cafe, but those two things are kind of mutually exclusive. And we've also got people coming to Survivors from other parts of the world. And, and indeed, we've got audiences for this festival for other parts of the world. So another plus about this Zoom situation that we find ourselves in. Julie. Thank you, Ju. I just wanted to, to suggest that each of our, our tonight's guests and poets actually said their own goodbyes yeah i think that's a really good idea so we'll say goodbye from east london and hand over to our artists and poets for the final world but i just have to say thank you all so much again we really have had a laugh the last hour so shall we go to wendy first oh thank you it's been brilliant for all the techie issues earlier <laughs> Um, I, pers I, I persisted. And it was, yeah, it's been wonderful. Thanks for this opportunity, Ju and Julie. It's going to be, it's been lovely. Yeah. It's been lovely to have you. It is always lovely to have you. And it's yeah. been lovely to welcome Cheryl because Cheryl, Yay. you're new, you know, you're new to lots of people, but you're new to Together 2012 and it's been great to welcome you. Yes. And well, lucky with you, Fab. <laughs> Did you want to say something to say goodbye? Me? Yeah. yeah, I mean, thank you so much. It's been fantastic. And this is a very kind of different experience, you know, doing things on the scene. But thank you so much, Jim and Julie. You know, I've had a great time. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, and because of loads of other stuff that's coming up, coming up as well. Yeah, so, well, no, thank you. It's us Thanks. so grateful and appreciative. And of course, I think it's like everything on Zoom, we're still making it up. So, one yeah. of the many activities that we've got on in the next three weeks just finally to flag up next wednesday we have a conference it's the only all-day activity we have it's from 10 30 to 4 but you can jump in and out as you wish and it's on running inclusive events and activities both online and offline and we have this huge number of industry people like the events industry forum the association of festival organizers Edinburgh Fringe Society. So if as a disabled artist you want to tell them what it needs what needs to happen to make it accessible to you because the conversations are always about audiences yeah. and I encourage yeah. everybody to come, all disabled yeah. people. Well, in fact everybody's welcome. So finally, yeah. Helena, you're our newest artist tonight, and we so enjoyed Space Invaders. What made you well, we're not going to do a Q and A, but just, yes, <laughs> you just want to tell us a little bit more about it as a final goodbye. Um, yeah, oh, thank you so much for having me. I, I, obviously, I'm new to everyone here, and it's been such a fantastic opportunity. I think um, I'm a big. Uh, I love having fun with different characters, and I thought, oh, an alien. And also, I think as a disabled person, I kind of thought of it as a metaphor. I think sometimes you can feel also a bit alien in your own body, but also in other situations. Um, I've got nystagmus, I don't know if people out there know what that is, but I've got a, a, an impairment that's kind of hidden but seen, you know, if you stare into my eyes long enough, you know, but I, I've got a little wobble. So sometimes if people notice it, I feel quite alien in, in my, you know, and, and uncomfortable. So that's kind of what inspired the piece. Well, we really enjoyed it. What I'm gonna suggest is that all of you, your social media contacts, but also if you've got a, mail, a mailing list, and if you haven't got a mailing list yet, Helena, set one up. We'll put the details onto the programme page. The recording of tonight will also be up on the programme page tomorrow night. So if your friends, loved ones, or just anybody you know has missed it and wants to see it, it will be up on the website, embedded via YouTube. So please do check it out. And if you missed our wonderful Sign Dance Collective preview performance on Tuesday, again, that's all programmed into the program page. And just like your last year, as a digital festival, it will just keep growing and growing and then it will remain for people to enjoy. So yet another of the advantages of these new situations. Thank you so much, all of the artists 
And a big, well, a huge thank you to Chris Burrow from Burrow Interpreting for the British Sign Language Interpretation and Cheryl Holly from Global Real Time Captioning. It's four minutes after eight and we traditionally never run over time. So I'm going to blame Julie <laughs> because I can. <laughs> and um, go and put our supper on i wish everybody a safe journey to your own kitchens and look forward to seeing you again very soon bye bye, bye.